Bismillah, alhamdulillah, assalamu alaikum, greetings of peace to everybody. Hope you all are doing well. I'm going to touch upon a few things in this video I think are very, very important. One, I'm going to talk about the judo match that happened in the Olympics between the Egyptian and the Israeli. And from there, I'm going to talk about a disturbing, a very disturbing post that came after this, shortly after this, all that and more in this video. Keeping it real, real how we keep it. Get ready for Eddie. Set back and be Eddie show. All right, let's get right into it. The judo match at the Olympics, and what happens? The Egyptian fighter loses, refuses to shake the hands. And my opinion is, is he should have shook his hand. He should have shook his hand. But then what I was thinking deeper, you know, you flick what you, you know, you usually you, you want to think like what I'm not going to get into the to what what really was his intention, what is it what it was. But I was just, you know, this is just for conversation. I was thinking that if I was to ask an, an Israeli Jew who's uh, who's been on my program, a friend of mine, Miko Pillet, whose father was a general in the Israeli army. His family was part of the signing of the Declaration of Independence. Really, a um, a person of of high standing there. He'd probably tell me that it had it, it probably had something to do. I'm guessing with the oppression of the Palestinian people, the aggression, the apartheid state, protesting this of of Israel. That that's what what I'm guessing. And probably Rabbi Weiss, who's been on the Dean Show, who's been on my program, he'd probably tell me the same thing. Now, do I agree with him not shaking hands? No, he should have shook his hand, I think. Uh, that's that's what I would have done. This is what I would have advocated for any of, 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 of my, uh, my black bills competing. And I would have took, it, it reminds me of the, the verse in the Quran, chapter 4134, where God Almighty is saying that uh, good and evil are not the same. Repel evil with what is better. And then the one whom you had, might have had enmity with would become a, a friend. Okay, so we got that out of the way. I, my opinion, what I, uh, he should have shook his hand. Let's move on from there. Now the more alarming and disturbing thing was some of the comments that came after that in a particular post that really was something just hate-filled, derogatory, bigoted, and it was from someone in particular in the martial arts community, the Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu community, and I wanted to, to speak out instead of just being a silent voice, I wanted to be a loud voice, because if, if, if the people, if we, when we see this hate, we don't speak out against it, hate breeds hate. And no matter if you're a small leader, a big leader, you're a leader. And especially someone who's involved in martial arts, you're helping to groom future generations to be men of character, not just learning how to fight, uh, learning the art, but also learning how to be a better human being. You need to be a good example. And this is totally opposite to that. So you guys are probably like, what's the post? What's this all about? Now, before I get to that, something very interesting Everything happens for a reason. Another thing that motivated me was that this individual in the community, in the Jiu-Jitsu community, this person actually fought against one of my black belts. Isn't that ironic? Uh, Professor Idris, my cousin also, they competed. Let's go to this match. It's like a very interesting feeling when you feel yourself in your time to be capable to expose yourself in a way to fight and compete. That's not means a victory or defeat or anything, but just be able to 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 do it, you know? Finish it, Idris! So when I learned about that, that they actually competed, they fought, and actually at the end, as you could see, that my black belt, Idris, he shook his hand. So shake the hand. He shook his hand, no worries, no problems, it's all good. And part of good sportsmanship, yes, let's do it, move on. But this person, and I'm going to get to this, and, and I, 
and I want to, we should always look for the good in situations. Should always look that everything happens for a reason. There's got to be, you, we cannot be pessimists. We have to be optimists and look that hopefully through this, this person can get informed, get educated. We can try to dispel some of the myths, the misconceptions and move on. Good can go ahead and be accomplished from this small evil that's taking place. Now this gentleman who made this post, it's a very disturbing post. He says, why are people complaining about his disrespect? We know what his religion brings and his hate for Jews and Christians, or should I say anyone but a Muslim? Let's stop right there. We know what his religion brings. I mean, it, this is very disturbing. I mean, to go and insult over 1.7 billion human beings all across the globe, and especially, you know, if you think about the United Arab Emirates, Abu Dhabi was started there. How many of the Gracies have great relationship with the Muslims there in that country? Brazilians, Americans, people from all walks of life, people who are trained in Jiu-Jitsu in different parts of the Muslim world. And we use this kind of to, to unify us. And here comes somebody spreading this hate. We shouldn't tolerate it. It's not a joking matter. We should all condemn it. And the other thing he talks about, about the hate that this individual is preaching, try to push it on like as if Muslims hate Jews and Christians, another fallacy. And they say, we want to separate the Muslims and the Christians is obviously going to kill them. And uh, they saw it coming. So the Muslims went around giving headscarves to the Christian women and otherwise trying to disguise them and they risk their lives to save the Christian minority. Some propaganda that I, I, f I really feel bad and sorry for people like this who have fell victim to this. You know the Islamophobia machine, we know that it's, uh, it's, a, it's a 200 million dollar bi annual business. It's, it's money bashing Islam, bashing Muslims and this person has fell victim to it but the question is, how long is he going to remain a victim? Especially after he sees this. He can grow from this or continue to remain ignorant. So let's start with the first part. We know what his religion brings. I mean, I, I've, you see this individual wearing a Muhammad Ali's t-shirt. Let's start with that. What did it bring for the American hero? The Muslim American hero who a quarter of a million people were affected by his charity. He went and helped those American hostages get released. He was out there serving humanity, helping humanity. He's a, he's a legend. He's a legacy. And he was a Muslim. And he was a Muslim. Muhammad Ali, you're wearing his shirt. Let's move on from there. The hating of Jews and Christians. We know that uh, as a Muslim man, you're allowed to marry a Christian or a Jew. I mean, how ironic is that? You know, you would, you would uh, love... It'd be a really a love-hate relationship. Can you imagine uh, if, if this if this was true, or you you'd have to hate the one you love, your your wife. This would be uh, something uh, impossible to do, and it's crazy, and it's not a joking matter. But you do have this ignorant that's prevalent, misinformation, and we know that during the Inquisitions, and many uh, Jewish academics will come out, historians, they know that Jews fled from persecution to Muslim lands and so did Christians. Open arms, they're welcome even during the Holocaust. So this is something absurd, it's disturbing, it's wrong. Well look, I'm actually, interestingly enough, as an Orthodox Jew, a great champion of Islam. The fact is that the Jewish community has a real debt to the Islamic community because when we were kicked out of Catholic Spain in 1492, when we were kicked out of Catholic Portugal, I think in 1503, it was the Muslims who took the Jews in. That's why there are Jewish communities in the Islamic world till this very day. The Islamic community, the Jewish community of Istanbul dates from then. Um, it, was, it was specifically um, countries uh, not beyond the Ottoman Empire where Jews were tolerated uh, and they were welcomed in. And they, they, played, they paid a jizya. There was a poll tax they paid, but they were never persecuted. And there wasn't a Holocaust in the Islamic world. The fact is the Jews and Muslims have so much in common. I'd been out to a supper club with uh, Maria Parsheva, my girlfriend. It's a Friday night in New York City around 1130. Uh, we boarded the train on 
Canal Street on the last car in the queue. It happened aboard the Q train at 11.30 on Friday night. Walter and three of his friends were heading home after a Hanukkah party in Manhattan when he turned to another group of riders and said, Happy Hanukkah. Like, happy Hanukkah, my friends. Like, something to that effect. And almost immediately, you see the look in this guy's face. You killed him. You killed Jesus. You killed him on Hanukkah. You dirty Jew. You effing Jew. When Hassan Askari, another passenger, tried to help, he was beaten up, too. Hassan's the only person to try and help us at all. Everybody runs to the back of the car. It was pretty shocking to see something like that happening. You know, you usually don't expect something like that to go on in the train. Here we have freedom of speech and freedom of religion. And what I've seen this Friday night is just uh, put my spirits down. That guy, Hassan, my girlfriend and me and my best friend might have been beaten to death on that train if he hadn't jumped in and helped us. And Islam, it teaches you to be you know, helpful to your fellow man, to be kind, courteous. No one else helped us except Hassan. No one else on the train. A Muslim American saved us when our own people were on the train and didn't do anything, and when everyone else's people were on the train doing anything. Someone who in the media often gets painted as the enemy of Israel and the Jews. You know, this is a Bangladeshi Sunni Muslim. This is someone that jumped in, he knew we were Jews to help us. Hopefully this will reach a lot of people and it will change the way people view each other. It will change the way people act toward one another. He goes on to say that Muslims kill innocents through suicide bombing and terrorism. L l let's, let's move on from there. We're going to see what the experts have to say. We're going to see what the statistics are. You know that the FBI statistics report that 95% of terrorist attacks from these years were done by non-Muslims. Did you know that over a thousand terrorist attacks in the last five years and less than 2% of those were done by Muslims? And I even get hesitant to, to say, I get weary when you say by Muslims because we know when we look at you know, some of these recent events that have happened, if these people were following Islam, they wouldn't be doing such attacks because there's a profound statement in the Quran. And even before I get to this statement, we, we see that a Muslim it's not supposed to be in a nightclub, own a nightclub, smoking dope, smoking the ganja, drinking, doing all of these, these things that are opposite to Islam. And you find these people who've done such acts, the small fringe element that the media portrays like they're exemplary Muslims. If they were implementing Islam, they wouldn't be in a nightclub, they wouldn't be smoking drugs, doing drugs drinking, partying, doing all of these things, uh, hurting innocent people. This is totally uh, the antithesis to Islam. It's, it's very clear. And there's a, it's a, I want you to remember this, this verse, chapter 5, verse 32 in the Quran. There's no constitution like it. There's no scripture like it anywhere in the world. It says killing one innocent human being is if you, as if you kill the world. Saving one innocent life is as if you saved the world. Let's continue on. Did you know that with the over 140,000 terrorist attacks since 1970, this would still equal, I mean, that's 140,000 since 1970. And if you add how many Muslims, those who claim to have been Muslim, you want to link back to, to being Muslim, less than 0.009%. Look at the facts. Don't follow the fiction. So when we add that up, 0.009% French element, and then you and then you, if if you want to make that with the single not with the single digits, you want to calculate that. Okay, now Muslims are terrorists, but not all, not all terrorists are Muslims. Muslims are terrorists. Yada yada yada. Uh, then let's look at this logic. Why don't we take that same logic and put it to something that's more logical? If you look at of the recent Nobel Prize peace winners, you would have five out of the 12. So according to that logic, all Muslims should be peacemakers because they're winning the Nobel Peace Prize. It gets more interesting. I mean, the facts enlighten the mind. They open the hearts. Knowledge is key. Education, that's what the Dean Show is about. We cover all these things. You can go to deanshow.com. Let me continue on. You know, there was a study uh, carried out by the University of North Carolina and it showed that less than 0.002% of Americans killed since 9-11 were killed by 
Muslim terrorists. And again, if these people were following Islam, they wouldn't be doing any terrorism as far as killing innocent men, women, children. Of course, you have a God-given right to defend yourself. But wrecking havoc in the land and killing innocents, this is totally forbidden in Islam. Now, let, let's verse that and compare that to consumer safety reports and seeing how many they say people were killed since then by their TV, by their furniture. I mean... If you look at toddlers with a gun, you have more of a chance kill, getting killed by, by a toddler with a gun, by lightning, or by your furniture than you do some Muslim terrorists. And you've been spooked. I mean, you're afraid. Obviously, the, the uh, Islamophobia machine, $200 million annually is a business, frightening you. The boogeyman's coming to get you. And you get scared, you get spooked, and many intelligent people are seeing beyond this. Ignorant people are getting informed if they're open-minded, if they're sincerely looking for the truth, because seek and you shall find. Now we know we, that we don't blame as logical human beings, we don't blame the car manufacturer for a drunk driver. So you always have crazy individuals, you have this in every religion. You had 355 mass shootings in 2015. You had three of those that were, again, connected back to someone being a, of Muslim background, but you didn't hear the person's faith being mentioned, his ideology. Usually it's like, okay, is this guy sick, deranged, what's going on? And you, when you dig deep into these people's lives that have done these things that you claim were Muslim, you see that they had some really psychological problems. Sociopaths, sick, deranged, it's evil acts. And Islam condemns it, we condemn it. The common mantra is, why don't Muslims condemn it? We don't have the platform nor the mic. We don't own the Fox News, my friend. Now again, we're analyzing, looking at his really disturbing, hate-filled, bigoted post, dismantling it one by one, using logic, reasoning, facts, not fiction, and suicide. He mentioned suicide bombing. This has nothing to do with Islam. It's clearly mentioned in the Quran that killing yourself is something that's forbidden, throwing yourself into destruction. And this is something, a consensus among the scholars, Muslim scholars, that suicide is something that is forbidden. So there's no suicide in Islam. You know, a lot of these things came and why, why don't we go to the experts? I mean, look and research and look and, and see what the experts are saying about this. In my opinion, it's injustice, humiliation, oppression. That is, are the most common causes of terrorism. Some people claim that religion motivates terrorists. However, the academic research of Dr. Robert Pape has proved the claim to be false. Uh, what I did is I collected the first complete database of every suicide terrorist attack around the world since 1980. Uh, the first version of this database uh, uh, was uh, uh, published uh, a few years ago and it went from 1980 to 2003. Think of that as like the pre-Iraq database, and then the second version from 2004 uh, on, think of that as the data that's happened since Iraq. Um, and what the data shows quite clearly is that uh, the principal cause of suicide terrorism is foreign occupation. In that period, from 1980 to 2003, there were 315 completed suicide terrorist attacks by 462 suicide terrorists who actually killed themselves. I don't mean attempts. These are people who actually killed themselves. The world leader during that 24-year period was not an Islamic group at all. They're the Tamil Tigers in Sri Lanka. The Tamil Tigers are a Marxist group a secular group, a Hindu group. In fact, over half of those 462 suicide attackers were purely secular. Because you see, many uh, Muslim suicide terrorist groups are also pure, purely secular, such as the PKK in Turkey. The PKK in Turkey, which did uh, numerous suicide attacks in the 1990s, uh, is again a Marxist, read, anti-religious, suicide terrorist group. Because you see, if Islam, as a sort of a radical religion, or if it were just radical Muslims, 
uh, doing this, then what you would expect is sort of this thin veneer of suicide attack kind of scattered all around the world. Uh, you would expect that, oh, there's 1.4 billion Muslims. You know, there's this teeny tiny fringe of Muslims kind of everywhere who'd be willing to do suicide attack. Uh, but that's not the way the data looks. It's really concentrated, and it's really concentrated in occupations. <laughs> And you go to these people, I mean, not to Fox News, you know, that's what causes radicalization. When you self-educate and you're reading the headlines and, you know, a snippet here, a snippet there, and then you create a self-fulfilling prophecy in your head. You know, you're coming at the Quran, looking at things out of context. You're getting your information from Islamophobes. You become Islamophobe. You become a radical. You start radicalizing your students. I mean, this needs to stop. You, we... You know, we hope that the individual grows out of this. We dispel, we, we dismant, we're dismantling this one by one. We got one more to go. He talked about that Muslim men they behead their wives. How ridiculous! I mean, God, I, I, it's just really absurd. If a man was to do that, to to behead his wife, he, the Islamic court would put him to death. He'd be executed. I mean, so that's done with that. What else do we have that he talks about? He said he didn't shake his Jews' hand, duh, complain about the real problem, his religion and his leaders. Okay, so we take it back. It's a very nice shirt that the Mr. Uh, the, the, the guy is wearing with Muhammad Ali. I like to use this example because this is an exemplary Muslim. And there are a lot of those. He's someone that was living Islam, personified Islam through his actions. You're wearing his shirt, my friend. He was an American Muslim hero. And Islam, through the facts that I just quoted, clearly is opposite to what people like yourself are thinking. I really encourage you to watch The Dean Show, to look more into this. You know, this is something that is, is very disturbing. You've insulted over 1.7 billion human beings. I'd, I'd like for other jujitsu teachers and instructors who see this to come out and condemn you know people like this they can either grow from this come out they should apologize we can shake hands we can move forward we can grow from this just like the man that reminds me who who wear a derogatory shirt in Arizona and then he went into the mosque afterwards he was a hater he was a hater but then he got to ask the tough, tough questions to the Muslims he made a human connections and then out of respect for the Islamic people know what I know now since I have talked to them and spoke with them no no I would not do that again um, just because I, I don't want to offend or hurt those people he came out a reformed man and I have hope I hope I have hope for humanity I have hope for this individual he can come out even better from this or I mean sadly I hope he doesn't remain in that hole of ignorance cuz he's only going to bring does that, he's only he's only going to hurt himself his heart his his humanity and and for those people who are under him but let let me finish off with this I mean you do have issues I mean what can be the cause I mean we have to get to the root of the problem and then do some self evaluation and we've dispelled this myth about Islam, you know, someone picking up the Quran and because they did that, you know, now they're suicide bombers, they're terrorists. No, I, I just gave you the facts, rewind it, see it again, look at it again. It's very clear. But if we look at, for instance, just let's, let's, you, let's listen, um, let's see Iraq for a second. Let's look to that, the 13 years of sanctions. You know, the death of one million children over the course of 13 years. Imagine you've had innocent, I mean, innocent life. They're here, it's, it's all the same, it's innocent life. You had, two th in 2003, an invasion based on false premises, on lies. Do you remember that? And then conservative, I mean, low numbers to estimate 170,000 innocent people had died from this, this war. You know, the reliable sword, the Lancet, puts it at over 760,000 innocent human beings. You know, you go into a country, you exploit its resources, flip it upside down, turn it into a ghetto. Imagine if that happened here in America. How many terrorists would have that had created? You know, there was a headline in a popular newspaper, The Onion, says, New bomb able to create a thousand new terrorists with one blast. When these bombs are dropped in someone's backyard, at someone's wedding, drone attacks, all these things that, um, imagine if it was happening here. 
you know, these people, they, they end up losing themselves. You know, you get your whole family destroyed. Again, Islam doesn't condone it. Islam condemns killing of innocent men, women, and children. You don't reciprocate this kind of evil with evil. As I quoted the, the verse, and there is so much self-reflection that we need to do and to see that warmongering, this war machine, this is not bringing about any good, right? And this is the root of the cause of the problem. And you hear a lot about this ISIS, Daesh. You know, these people are killing more Muslims. Did you know that? They're killing more Muslims. You just had this event in Pakistan. Where's the, the pray for Pakistan? And seven, in, 70 innocent people had died. It seems like uh, Muslim blood is cheap. And remember, a Muslim is simply one who, who submits to the will of God. You know, what is Islam brought? It, it's, it's brought that individual to have peace with his creator, peace within himself, peace with humanity and society. And a person who has peace in himself, he's not expounding this hate rhetoric. And, and it goes down to a, a deeper problem within oneself that people have when they're full of this hate. They're, they're taught this hate. They end up breeding more hate. And we, that's where we have to, as a community, shut this, this hate rhetoric down. We have to condemn this. Again, insulting over 1.7 billion human beings all across the world. You can't separate the two. When you say F Sharia, it's like saying F the Bible, F Christian. When you insult, you, you want to get to know someone, you come in and you assault his mother. I mean, what? that's not the whole essence of freedom of speech. My friends, you know, the, for, the founding forefathers of this country di didn't make freedom of speech based on those premises. And you insult this way of life that brings peace to, to so many people's hearts. I mean, you know, part of Islam is the deep love and reverence for Jesus, peace be upon him, and his blessed mother Mary. There's a whole chapter named after her in the Quran. If you got to know this, I mean, you would see that there is so many more commonalities. There are so many more commonalities between Muslims and Jews and Christians. And people, the good in humans have forced them to, to look beyond this hate and have investigated and have seen this. And, and, and what kind of people accept Islam? Women particularly, why would they accept Islam if, if it was preaching these, these evil things? But no, they see the opposite. What, what was the difference is that they've investigated. They've looked into it. They've taken an a analytical, scientific approach and they've seen like, hold on, man, we've been fed fairy tales, f fiction, false propaganda. And, and many people, we see that Islam is the fastest growing, second largest religion in the world. It's not going anywhere. Christians aren't going anywhere. So we need to learn to work together to make society, to make the world a better place and to teach our students and those under us. You know, you have, I often give the example of Miyagi, the karate kid, when he was teaching his student Daniel san not just fighting, but some principles for life. And then you had Cobra Kai. You want to be Cobra Kai? You want to be Miyagi, my friend. You want to be somebody who's spreading hate or love, understanding. You got to pick a side, and if you continue to stay on that side, you'll just bring more destruction upon your heart, your soul. Your soul. You'll be a, a person who will just be angry and bitter, and you'll lose so many opportunities to make more connections with more human beings to develop more understanding and to live a more fruitful and well-balanced life so i hope that one day i can meet people like this who've had a change of heart I, my door is open to come and sit and we can discuss these matter, matters like two intelligent human beings not insulting one another again you don't get to making a human connection by insulting someone's someone's mother someone's father someone's family this is something that's even more dear to us, is this way of life from the Creator. Islam, submission to the will of God, submission to the Creator, not the creation. Now, I think I've covered this enough, and I hope that we can grow from this, and I hope this person comes out and really reflects on these ignorant, bigoted statements that the individual made, apologizes to, to the over 1.7 billion people that he has he has offended and all the people who are working for jiu-jitsu and see it growing in this part of the world in the United Arab Emirates, people who, who work there, who live, live with Muslims, who, who experience the love and generosity of Muslims and the instructors, people who use this as a unifying factor. Let's not let someone use it as a dividing factor. 
and divide us. Condemn it, speak against it. If you, if you like what we have to say, like this video. And, and hopefully I look forward to this person growing from this. And I'm looking for the good to come out of it. I hope so. I really do. I pray. I pray for, for him, for humanity, that God guides us all to, to peace and purpose in life. And so we can have good relationships with each other and we can eradicate this hate. I, I end with a quote from Nelson Mandela who said, People aren't born hating. They're taught to hate. We can teach them how to love. And that's through education. This is the important thing. Call us 1-800-662-ISLAM if, if anybody watching this has some more, some more questions about the matter. Or tune into thedeanshow.com. I cover this extensively. I talk about many of the false pretenses that people push out there, expound on. And it's, and it's usually the sincere people, intelligent people, people who want to work towards a better tomorrow, towards understanding, tolerance, and love. You know, who are open-minded and, and your mind cannot work, as the common saying goes, unless it's open like a parachute, like a parachute. And ignorance is a poison. It kills love and friendship. And, and let's not remain ignorant. Let's grow to understand, make the human connection. And um, I hope uh, you guys enjoyed this short video. I'll see you next time. Tune in every week to The Dean Show. Until then, subscribe right now. Assalamu alaikum. Peace be with you.